Welcome to another deep dive, listeners. Uh, today we're we're headed to the Mexican desert. Oh, nice. Yeah, to a town called Coyami. Um, and on August 25th, 1974, something really strange happened there. Go. Oh. Multiple people said they saw a UFO crash. Whoa, hold on, a UFO crash. Yeah, and not just any UFO. This thing, it was metallic, disc-shaped, flying super low, and then boom, it crashed. A huge explosion. People heard it for miles. I bet. That's that's wild. So what do we what do we know about like who saw this thing? Right. So that's the thing. Tons of people said they saw it. And even though their stories are a little different, the main details, those are all the same. Hmm. That is interesting. So like even with different perspectives, they're all seeing this this metallic disc. Exactly. Makes that... you think, right? Like can you imagine oh, yeah. the ground shaking, that loud explosion? Right. One person even said they saw markings and lights on it. Hmm. It must have been incredible, you know? And probably terrifying. Oh, yeah, I bet. But, you know, with eyewitness accounts, sometimes it's hard to know for sure. Like what someone sees as a strange marking, someone else might see totally differently. Oh, for sure. But a lot of them said it was a metallic disc. That has to mean something. Yeah, it definitely adds to the mystery. But here's where it gets even weirder. Okay. People were saying there was debris all over, metal pieces, strange stuff, and then poof, it was gone. Wait, what? So the debris just vanished? Yeah. Gone. And what happened to it? Well, nobody knows for sure, but you know, there's a lot of theories. Some people think the government covered it up, like maybe the Mexican authorities or even the U.S. got involved. Oh, interesting. Imagine like soldiers swooping in and taking everything before anyone could like live. Like something out of a movie, but why all the secrecy? What could be so important about a crashed UFO that they had to hide it? Right. It's a good question. It's also possible, and this is where it gets really interesting that it wasn't a government that took it. Maybe someone else got there first. Okay, who else could have taken it? Well, think about it. What if some secret organization, with their own reasons for keeping quiet, took the debris? Wait a minute, are you saying some, like, secret society grabbed alien technology before anyone even knew about it? That sounds like a conspiracy theory. It does, doesn't it? But we don't have any real proof for any of these ideas. That's the thing about Koyami. There's so much we don't know, and that just makes it even more mysterious. Okay, so we've got this, like, super secret organization thing going on. But maybe it wasn't aliens, right? I mean, what if it was something else entirely? Yeah, good point. We can't rule out the more uh, normal explanations. I mean, some people think it could have been a meteor. Oh. Or boy. something like that. You know, some natural thing that people just mistook for a UFO. Or maybe it was, like, a secret government project. Oh, so like a test flight or something. Right, something that went wrong and they couldn't just come out and say, hey, oops, that was our super secret aircraft. Sorry about the explosion. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess they'd rather let people think it was a UFO than admit to a failed experiment, huh? Exactly. It's happened before, you know? Government's keeping things quiet like that. So we've got all these different theories. Yeah. What do you think is the most interesting part of this whole Koyami thing? Hmm. I think it's how this whole town, Koyami, how it's become connected to this this mystery, this event, whatever it was, it put Koyami on the map. It did, yeah. People from all over, UFO fans, researchers, they all came to Koyami trying to figure it out. And it's still going on. I mean, they have a museum there, books, documentaries, even festivals, mm -hmm. all because of this one event. It's like the whole town is a, a monument to this mystery. It shows how much we as humans want to understand things we don't know. Yeah. We're curious. Right? right. And things like this, like Koyami, they make us question what we know. They push us to think beyond what we think is possible. And even though we might not have the answers... It keeps us looking, keeps us wondering. Exactly. It's a good reminder that there's still so much out there that we don't understand about the world, about the universe, about everything. It makes you think. So to everyone listening, if you were going back to Koyami today to try and figure this out, what would you do? Would you go talk to all those people who saw it, you know, hoping maybe they missed something? Or would you head straight out to the desert with all the latest gadgets and start looking for, like, a tiny piece of that debris? I mean, that's what makes it so cool, right? It's like, Koyami is a blank page. We get to come up with our own ideas, try to figure it out. Yeah, like a big puzzle, waiting for someone to find those missing pieces. And maybe someday they will. What if some researcher finds, like, I don't know, a piece of the UFO or some old document that explains everything? Until then, I think Koyami will keep fascinating people. It shows that even with all our technology and science, some things are still mysteries. It makes us realize we don't know everything. For sure. The universe is huge, and we're only just starting to understand it. 
Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the Koyami UFO incident. We hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks for listening, everyone. And who knows, maybe it made you a little more curious about the world around us. Keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep on diving deep. We'll see you next time.